Hello everyone, my name is Maximilian Padilla. I'm a fourth year medical student at the University of Utah. And uh, those were two great presentations we saw. Tough acts to follow, but I'll do my best. First of all, thank you to Dr. Olson and everyone here at the Moran Center for the opportunity to speak to you today. The topic I'm gonna to be presenting on is laser astigmatic correction using intralace with phacal emulsification. Two of the most common clinical diagnoses we see in ophthalmology are astigmatism and cataracts. Uh, it's estimated that 3.5 million cataract surgeries are done per year, and the prevalence of astigmatism is estimated at 32.4% of the population. And since these are both very common, it's a common practice to treat astigmatism at the same time as cataract surgery. Here's an illustration of the traditional astigmatic surgery. It's limbal relaxing incisions using a guarded diamond blade. Lasers have been revolutionary to ophthalmology. Ever since the 1970s, uh, they have had great success in treating different anterior and posterior uh, diagnoses. LASIK, uh, one of the main lasers that's used in LASIK surgery at the beginning was the interlace laser, and it was initially FDA approved for refractive surgery. Recently, a new laser has come out. It's called the Femto Second Laser, also by the same company, and it was initially approved for lamellar corneal surgery in 2003 and keratoplasty in 2008. And it's been exciting because it's also approved for cataract surgery since 2010. Um, the use of intralace lasers has been combined with several different procedures. One common combination is to treat a patient for refractive error using LASIK surgery and then at the same time do astigmatism surgery with limbal relaxing incisions. To the best of our knowledge, no one has studied using this older intralace system to do limbal relaxing incisions for astigmatism correction at the same time as they do cataract surgery. So Dr. Ambadi had the great idea to do a study looking at, or well, a case series looking at treating patients with cataracts and astigmatism and doing the astigmatism surgery at the same time as the cataract surgery. So the case series that we uh, came up with had a total of four patients and seven eyes fit the parameter of the study. The patients ranged in age from 62 to 70, three males, one female, uh, common comorbidities of diabetes and hypertension. All of the patients approved for the study had astigmatism and all of the patients also had cataracts. So the patients were treated at the Moran Eye Center and the astigmatism LRI incisions were performed using the Moran's 150 kilohertz intralace IFS laser to make the initial anterior side cuts for astigmatism correction. I wanted to highlight one of the patients that we worked on that uh, Dr. Mbadi operated on to show you the process that he went through to determine their degree of astigmatism and then how much needed to be corrected using the laser. So in this particular patient, the refractive numbers are given here with negative 13.75 plus 2.5 by 60 degrees OS. And I'm going to focus on the left eye for simplicity. And in this gentleman, his best corrected visual acuity pre-op was 20 over 500. So we use different imaging modalities to calculate the degree of astigmatism. And those modalities included the Oculus Pentacam, IOL Master, and topography. 
But uh, I'll come back to these refractive and visual acu acuity numbers in the post-op slide. So the Oculus Pentacam gave us a great reading of 1.8 on astigmatism at 77 degrees. The IOL master was 1.96 at 78 degrees. And topography showed an astigmatism of 1.68 at 71 degrees. So now we had the data ne needed to formulate a plan of how to treat this patient. So the average of those three measurements that I showed you in the previous slides turned out to be 1.82 diopters of astigmatism at 75 degrees. And the uh, aim on this study was to have the patients be positive 0.25 to positive 0.5 at the end of surgery. And here is the printout of all the calculations and laser settings that were needed to successfully carry out the surgery. So as you can see here, the anterior side cut was on. The laser calculated out what um, posterior depth of the incision that was needed. And then the cut angle and cut position for the limbal relaxing incisions was also noted. And the interlaced laser has a special setting where you can modify it to, uh, to do the limbal relaxing incisions. So before I had mentioned the cut position and cut angle, this is an example of, on top here, the cut position was 75 degrees. The cut angle was 50 degrees, so it went 25 degrees to each side of the cut position. So in total, this ranged from 50 degrees to 100 degrees. And on the bottom here, the cut angle, I mean cut position was 255 degrees, and the total cut ranged from 230 to 280 degrees. This just highlights the exact precision that can be attained with the interlaced laser. Here's a picture of the patient's eye in the post-op period. Right here, this faint line is the limbal relaxing incision made by the laser. And this just goes to, again to show the uh, the really precise angles and measurements that can be attained using the laser for these limbal relaxing incisions. In the post-op measurements, the patient's refraction was plano in both eyes. His visual acuity, before I had mentioned it was 2,500 in the left eye, it's now 2025. And the topographic astigmatism measurement post-op was 0 0.39 diopters. This fit in perfectly with the uh, target range we had set of between 0.25 and 0.5 for the post-op residual cylinder length. So uh, Dr. Ambadi attained the goal in this astigmatism measurement in the post-op period. Here's a picture, again, to show the limbal relaxing incisions of the right eye on this patient post-op. So right now, we're still at the uh, somewhat initial stages of this case series. We haven't gotten uh, the post-op topography on all of the patients yet because it's a relatively new study. So we don't have standard deviations. But so far, the initial results are that all patients are tolerating the surgery well. Six out of seven patients, I mean six out of seven eyes were Plano at the last visit. There have been no complications noted. The average pre-op cylinder was 1.7 diopters. The mean post-op cylinder is 0 0.49 diopters, so quite a difference between these two numbers. And the average post-op uncorrected visual acuity is 2025 right now. Right now, economics plays a huge role in uh, medicine and the decisions we make. So there are three options currently for the treatment of astigmatism in patients. One option is to use glasses. Another option is to use toric intraocular lenses placed in at the time of cataract surgery. And a third option is to use limbal relaxing incision surgery. 
And I recently talked to the surgery department and they told me that the toric lenses cost $350 to $400 more than standard intraocular lenses. So this brings up a, a really important topic of price. And the two lasers that are currently uh, being used, the intralace, which we have here, and the newer femtosecond laser uh, have quite a bit of a difference in the price. One source, INET, recently estimated that the upfront cost of buying a femtosecond laser is $450,000. And this can go up as high as $500,000. The material and maintenance fee is around $400 per eye just to operate. And many of these have a service contract for maintenance and other alterations to the laser that costs around $40,000 per year. The intralace laser, the one, the one that we have here, costs about $375,000 at the time it was purchased in 2008. The material and maintenance fee is about $160 per eye. And uh, the service contract on our laser is a per click fee, so there's not an upfront cost per year, it's just based on how many surgeries are done. And this is some really exciting data that came out about two days ago in the INET journal. So as we can see here, this looks at hypothetical break-even scenarios for buying a brand new femtosecond laser. This box right here looks at the five-year break-even point. And from what this says, depending on the number of surgeries that are done, the price per patient ranges between $500 to $900 for a surgery used in the femtosecond laser. At least that's what it would have to cost for a practice to break even. And um, there are several different numbers per year, ranging from 250 surgeries a year to 1,500 surgeries. The number of non-VA cataract surgeries done at the Moran Center is around 2,800. So that number can be taken into account with uh, this figure to kind of see the break-even point of using femtosecond lasers at the Moran Center. So there are several reimbursement issues that come into play with uh, limbal relaxing incisions for astigmatism surgery. The governing body for Medicare and Medicaid billing stated recently that patients can't be charged for capsular hexis, cataract incisions, or lens fragmentation using the lasers. And it's interesting because the femtosecond laser corporation, they really stress that their laser is great at performing these three uh, functions. But the problem is that based on what Medicare and Medicaid say, neither they nor the patients can be charged for these costs. But what we can charge patients for is for astigmatism correction. And astigmatism correction, we saw in the case series, is very effective if it's done with the intralace laser, the older laser. So the American Society of Cataract and Refractive Surgeons also agreed with what the uh, Medicare and Medicaid guidelines were. So in conclusion, although our case series is not complete yet, it seems like the intralace laser is likely a safe, effective, and economical alternative to corrective astigmatism surgery at the time of cataract surgery. There is a quite large price difference between the intralace laser and the femtosecond laser. And many of these costs are due to the initial per use and maintenance fees. Also, there's an issue of room to house a large laser. And a great thing about the laser we have at the Moran Center is that it's paid for and there isn't a yearly maintenance fee on it. So it works very economically both for surgeons and for the patients to use the existing intralace laser. 
future directions that we can see this project headed in is a head-to-head -head comparison with other astigmatic correction techniques on effectiveness, safety, and outcomes. It will also be interesting to see the impact on corneal uh, aberrations that exists with intralace surgery versus conventional surgery techniques. So a big thank you to Dr. Ambadi for his help and guidance with this project. Also, I'd like to thank Alicia for setting up the time for me to speak to you today and Chandler Crane for uh, arranging all of the files that I needed for this project. So are there any questions? <laughs> yes, sir. So <clears throat> if you look at the incisions you have in place there, and that's particularly true for those that totally blot plane A, those really are limbal relaxing incisions. They're astigmatic keratotomy with a relatively large optical plane. And those aren't really mirror windows. Uh, I think more and more we realize that most of these are actually peripheral to corneal incisions with the idea that they are the windows that are going to be okay. Second issue is it turns out that uh, one of the nice features of doing this with them to second, no matter what the technology is that is used, is that uh, they still stick together a bit. They have an effect, and so a lot of people are going <coughs> exactly wherever the new axis when the old thing is in position still in position of effect. Mm -hmm. But a good head-to-head -head comparison of the studies. Where's Nick? We got Nick here in the room. JCRF is dying. The two the city is this new is this new technology. Really superior. They're surprisingly low. And just the third comment is this whole field is in flux. Uh, Abbott, who owns Intralase, just announced that they just bought Optometica. Optometica is one of the new technologies for femtosecond. And I wow. can tell you that the prices are dropping like a rock. So uh, it's good. I think I think we're going to see an interesting combination uh, in that. Uh, showed there is, is true for what was purchased in 2012 by mm -hmm. our rated people are saying I, I'm already aware of use fees and the rest that are less than 150 to 160 dollars for the whole thing for doing the whole cataract as well as these things. That's exciting that'll be much more economic for everyone that'd be great. Well, it, it's, it's all, it's all going to evolve. No question is very precise. No one can say it's appropriately done. It's Okay. I think probably a good study will show that it is, but at this point, that's not good enough. And I apologize. I should have said astigmatic keratotomy instead of in, instead of limbal relaxing incisions for. for yeah, just just a small point. You see, they're definitely not. They're they're well in the. They're not. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.